All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP desktop M01-F1224, all right? So you can also see the model here. So you got this product model number, 1J7P8AA, um, pound, hashtag, whatever you want to call it, ABA, and then the model number, M01-F1224. All right, so we're going to be using a T15 or Torx 15 um, screwdriver bit. All right, this is a T15. Um, you can also use a flathead screwdriver for this, but this is, uh, goes in the screw a lot better. So if you look at the back here, you'll see there's this, um, where to go here, this handle here you can grab. Uh, we're going to have to work on that side. So I'm going to flip the computer over. Okay, give me a second here. All right. So I'll flip that over so this side is up, and we're going to remove this one screw right here, okay? So this is the um, T15. So it actually doesn't come all the way out. The screw will just be loose and wobbly like that. Once you do that, you can pull on this. I usually will use my knuckles to push on this while I pull, so I kind of like rotate it like that, okay? And that leverages it out. Once you pull, slide that back, it stops, and then you can go ahead and lift this cover off, okay? So I'll set this aside. It's a little dusty here. I'll probably brush it off with a toothbrush later and then clean it up. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it. <clears throat> Actually, let me go do that real quick. I'll be back. <clears throat> All right, so I cleaned that up. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the front panel. So it has these little clips here. You basically pull it up slightly and then you can slide it forward. Okay, just like that on all three. It helps to have two hands to do this, but I'm holding the camera. Once you get all three unclipped, the middle one will probably reclip itself, but once you get all three unclipped, you can swing it out just like this, okay? And you swing it down, and then you can pull this out, and there you go, that's the front panel. Um, you can see it has a little CD cover slot. It looks like that. All right, next thing we're gonna do, there's one more, or I guess there's two more, but there's one T15 screw here. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. After you remove that screw, we can remove this basket. You just pull up, okay? Um, actually, it's getting caught here, but let's see. We should be able to just pull this up. So just, okay, it's a little bit tough. Just pull it straight up. There you go. It swings, and then you can take this out. And there we go. So we got this metal plate bracket out. Okay, then we have this one here. We do need to untuck all the cables from here. So however it's tucked in there, just take them out. Okay, because we are going to be lifting this out so you can see there's all these cables here um, so this uh, these cables are so you can add a SATA hard drive if you want you can add a two and a half inch SATA hard drive with these little screws here to this bracket um, and then you can have another SSD in here a SATA SSD or you can just have a really large hard drive if you need a lot of storage anyways to remove this bracket there's a screw on this side you can see down there okay we're gonna remove that screw Okay, once you remove that screw, oops, I dropped it. Let me go grab that real quick. Give me a second. There we go. We got both screws there. Okay, once you get that screw out, we're going to lift this one up. So same thing, it swings up. Make sure none of the cables are caught on it. Okay, swing this one up, and then you can kind of wiggle it and pop this out. There we go. Just like that. So here's the bracket for a two and a half inch or three and a half inch SATA hard drive. Okay. Then you can see inside here, <clears throat> we have access to the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. It's a CR2032. To remove that, there's a little clip there. You just pull this back. Be careful, the battery might fly out. Okay, so just like that. And then you can take it out if you want. All right, but I'm gonna leave that there because the BIOS battery is fine. All right, if you wanna check if it's okay, you would use like a voltmeter, check the voltage. It should be above three volts, all right? Slightly above. Um, all right, then we got, let me see here. We got all these cablings here. You got this little cable here going from the power supply powering something. So this power supply actually only has a few cables. So it has these two, all right, that one and that one. It doesn't use standard power, su power supply, so make sure you get the right one. Um, let me flip this over. So they have this HP one. And I don't know, there's a model number right there. It's kind of small. HK280 
85 pp so this is likely a 280 watt um, you can also see the HP part number L742-006 alright L70042-006 so if you need that for some reason there it is got an SSD there it looks like a PCIe NVMe so if you want to upgrade or change that you can there's one screw there it looks like a JIS1 you can undo that screw it pops up slightly and then you can pull it back alright I'm not going to take it out because it should be okay the um, owner of this computer was having issues with it powering up after an update it was just staying black screened um, we got the fan here with the fan connector this is a three pin fan all right then you got the CPU fan here with a four pin fan connector um, I believe these are like the standard uh, smaller sized things you'll want to check yours I think it's 80 millimeters <clears throat> anyways or eight centimeter whatever but they measure it by millimeters okay if you want to add like a pci card or one of these <clears throat> pci express pci express 2 and this is a x16 pci express all right um you have this latch you can lift this up and move that aside and then these things you'd actually have to break them off <clears throat> i don't want to break them off because then you can't put them back on so i'm just going to leave it there but uh you can see they have this here and you can see where it's kind of still holding these parts you basically flip it forward and back and it will break it off okay what else we got we got two sticks of RAM um, let me actually take them out so I'll just take one out uh, but basically the way you get it out shoot if I can get it to focus here you pull this tab straight down be careful you don't pull it too hard because you don't want to snap it off but pull push this down okay I'll use my thumb because it's a little bit easier to feel right and then back here there's also another clip it's hard to get in there so just do what you can let me switch hands and push that just like that okay once you push those clips uh, down you can actually pull the stick of RAM up so let me grab that and show you guys and the RAM here 8 gig PC4 3200 AA you should be able to use any PC4 3200 AA. So if you want to put two 16 gig sticks, go for it. You can get 32 gigs of RAM. Okay. I'm going to put this stick of RAM back in. These cables are kind of in the way. But uh, basically, I try and get like one in the edge of the slot first. And then we'll get that one lined up and get there. All right. Once you get both sides in, then you kind of just push it one side at a time. Okay. I push my index finger first and then my thumb, but it doesn't really matter which order. And that's about it. You can see, obviously, the CPU is under here. Um, it looks like it's on a slot that you can actually upgrade or replace it. But uh, if you use a more powerful one, keep in mind, you might want to also upgrade the cooling system. Um, the power supply, though, I don't think you can really upgrade it. So I don't know how far you can upgrade the CPU because you're going to be lacking power. <clears throat> Same thing goes for adding a GPU or graphics card. You can't upgrade it. There's nowhere to plug in extra power for the power for the GPU. So keep that in mind. If you're upgrading your GPU, you can't get one that needs additional external power. It has to be powered completely by this slot alone. All right. Unless you get, um, I believe you can buy like some external power supply that you can plug it in outside. If you want, you can modify this case and somehow do that. But uh, that's going to be more complex. Um, and at that point, it's kind of like an external power, um, GPU. But yeah, I mean, I would believe it. it's possible. So if you really wanted to, um, you just got to find one of those external GPU power supply kind of things. And you should be able to do that. All right. Um, then in here, where did those other things go? You got this. You can see the SATA connector there. You can see another connector here for the SATA power. This is for the power. Right, and then there's uh, another SATA cable connector here and one more right there. So this thing can actually hold several SATA um, devices, which is interesting because the slot thing doesn't have that much room for that. Oh, I guess um, this one, they're not using the CD drive, right? So I guess uh, on some models, they'll have the CD drive, so we'll use the SATA. But still, you get a SATA uh, CD drive and the hard drive and then... Yeah, I don't know. There's an extra one, a third one there. All right. Here you have the little um, jumpers here for the password and the CMOS, the BIOS password and the CMOS pass um, 
settings. So I believe if you pull these jumpers off, it will reset them. Actually, are these individual like sideways? I, I can't tell. I think they're right now they're connected vertically. So I think if you connect them sideways, then it will clear it. But yeah, I don't want to mess with that. All right. Anyways, we're going to leave that alone. <clears throat> But as you can see right now, the pins are connecting like up and down, it looks like. Yeah. So I think if you connect the jumper sideways, you can see one is for clearing password and one's for clearing the CMOS. I don't know what the two down there are for, so be careful. If you jump those, I don't know if something bad will happen. But that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and put this thing back together. And yeah. All right. So we're going to rotate it back so we have all these ports facing us again. We'll take the hard drive one. It has these little three little things sticking out. So you put those in the slots there, okay, at an angle. It does have to go in at an angle, okay. Once you get it in, you can drop this down and clip it into place. We're going to get the screwdriver and put those screws back in, obviously. What did I do? Oh, here's, where's my screwdriver? Okay. Get that screw back in. So you can get the screw back on here. It's hard to do this with one hand, all right? And then we'll get the screw back in there. And earlier it was powering back on. After I um, did one stick of RAM at a time, I was able to get it to power back on. So hopefully it's good and nothing else is weird. Or maybe it could be I accidentally flipped the BIOS jumpers upside down. I hope not. I'm going to have to double check the date and time and then set it back up because I did reset the BIOS but I do want to make sure that it will keep those settings all right oops I don't know if you're able to see but I'm tucking these wires back along this clip here okay Try to get the wires all back in that clip and then I put this one last and this one kind of like holds everything else in there okay not that it's super important these cables can be flopping around it's not too not really going to cause an issue all right, anyways, we got this piece here. We're going to tuck these, the three feet on this one into the three slots here. Okay, so get those in. I don't know what you guys are able to see, but you get the idea. Okay, once you get those three in, we'll drop this down, click that into place. All right, we'll get the last screw for the inside here. And we'll get this in. All right, we'll rotate this again. Now we gotta get the front panel back on. This one's gonna be probably a little tough with one hand, but uh, you can see this front panel has these clips here. There, and there, and there, right? Kinda hiding underneath the metal plate. But uh, basically, you get that in at an angle. Okay. Um, actually, it will help for me to put it up sideways this way, so I can kinda see better. Okay, but here you can see it latches on that the metal hook there, there, and there. Okay, so we'll get that. Make sure it latches on there, and it's hard to do this with one hand. Okay, we'll rotate it sideways here, and we're gonna go up at an angle like this. Make sure it goes in. Okay, and then just push it down to clip all three clips back in. All right, now that we got all three clips in, we're going to get the side panel on and put the screw back, and that's pretty much it. So make sure you got the back of the computer here with the handle. Kind of just drop it in place. You can actually see, like, where these little clips on here are. They go into these little notches there, okay? So just drop it in. If it's not dropping down, you kind of just move it around. There you go. And then slide it forward. You might have to push it down as you kind of slide it. Okay, there we go. And the last screw. Sorry for the bad camera work, but uh, it is what it is. And that's pretty much it. Um, and then you just plug it all back together and turn it back on, obviously. If you did reset the BIOS, it will take a little bit longer to turn on, so keep that in mind. But that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.